Coming up on Network Africa. Former Angolan president's daughter Isabel Dos Santos plans to sue the government following allegations of fraud leveled against her. Burkina Faso's parliament approved training and funding for vigilante groups to counter the growing insecurity. Plus, the UN calls for international help to fight huge swarms of desert locusts sweeping through East Africa. Hello and welcome to the program everyone. I'm Layo Adegoke. The richest woman in Africa says she plans on suing the Angolan government following allegations of fraud levelled against her. Isabel Dos Santos, in a statement on Thursday, said the accusations made by Attorney General Helder Peter Groh on Wednesday were false and politically motivated. According to Mr. Groh, Ms. Dos Santos is being provisionally charged with money laundering, influence peddling, harmful management and forgery of documents, among other economic crimes. Ms. Dos Santos, who is considering running for presidency, said the accusations were political. Leaked documents showed how Ms. Dos Santos got access to lucrative land, oil, diamond and telecoms deals when her father, Jose Eduardo Dos Santos, was president. But she insists the documents have been leaked selectively to give a false impression of her business activities. To security matters now, Burkina Faso's parliament has voted to train and fund vigilante groups to counter the growing firepower of Islamist militant groups, prompting concerns from the United Nations. But the opposition is concerned that two weeks won't be enough to train a new armed volunteer defense force to help fight jihadists, but gave the military and government the benefit of the doubt and unanimously approved funding for local vigilantes. Vigilantes in Burkina Faso look set to receive government-provided military training and funding in a bid to tackle the growing firepower of jihadist groups. But the United Nations and human rights activists have warned the move could empower fighters accused of ethnic killings in the past. Security has deteriorated dramatically across the West African country and its neighbors over the past year as Islamist militants with ties to Islamic State and Al-Qaeda step up their attacks, threatening to overrun government forces in large swathes of the country. On Monday, militants killed 36 people at a market in a northern village and in the capital Ouagadougou, the new measures were met with a positive response. Civilian and military need to collaborate. We need to adapt, train civilians in relation to this tragedy, collaborate so that we can defeat this The law which now goes to President Roch Mark Kabore for his signature is mostly expected to be applied to groups called Koglawego. In November, a UN committee of experts say the groups were implicated in a massacre of dozens of Fulani herders in January last year. Political analyst Samila Rabo says there are risks. Now the challenge is in the training and forming on the ground by the defense and security forces and making sure we don't drift into creating a militia because since 2016, we already have threats from self-defense groups like Kogleogo, Dozos, who are not political figures. So the risk of organizing volunteers to defend the nation is greater on the ground. It's a good thing, but the risks are high. The number of vigilantes in Burkina Faso grew significantly as a response to instability after longtime president Blaise Compaoré was overthrown in 2014. There are now an estimated 40,000 of such groups in the country. The army in Mali says suspected Islamist militant fighters have killed six soldiers and wounded several others in an overnight attack in the central region. The suspected Islamist fighters attacked the troops in Diogani, the insecure Mopti area near the border with Burkina Faso. 
Mali has suffered violence since 2012 when Islamist militants took over the north. Insecurity there continues and the violence has spread to other countries in the region. Mali, along with Burkina Faso, Chad, Niger and Mauritania, are part of an anti-insurgency force supported by France known as the G5 Sahel. The U.S. military African command has denied reports that Kenyan soldiers hid in the grass as militants of the Islamist group Al-Shabaab attacked the Mande Bay military base near the Somali border. The New York Times carried an article this week that claimed the Kenyan soldiers took cover as Al-Shabaab fighters stormed into the base named Camp Simba and destroyed an American surveillance plane and the airfield. One U.S. military service member and two contractors were killed in the January 5th attack. The article also said that the performance of Kenyan soldiers during the attack had frustrated their American colleagues. But in a reply, the U.S. Africa Command said the response by U.S. and Kenyan forces to the attack was timely and effective and helped to reduce the number of casualties and eliminated the potential for further damage. Five Al-Shabaab fighters were killed and several dozens were repelled in that attack. While well, Libya's neighbors are uniting behind calls for foreign forces to stop interfering in Libya, they also urge an end to violations of the arms embargo. The meeting in Algeria comes before a planned meeting of Libya's warring parties in Geneva. Algerian Foreign Minister Sabri Bukadum told visiting envoys from other countries neighboring Libya that he hoped their meeting will strengthen a fragile truce in the country and help avert more foreign influence there. Heiko Maas, the foreign minister of Germany, which hosted a summit on January 19th, also joined the meeting, including other officials from Egypt, Tunisia, Chad, Niger, Sudan and Mali. The Eastern Libya military commander Khalifa Haftar launched an assault last year with his Libyan National Army to capture Tripoli with backing from Egypt, the United Arab Emirates, Russian mercenaries and African troops. The United Nations has called for international help to fight huge swarms of desert locusts sweeping through East Africa. A spokesman for the UN Food and Agricultural Organization called for aid to avert any threats to food security, livelihoods and malnutrition. Ethiopia, Kenya and Somalia are all struggling with unprecedented and devastating swarms of the food devouring insects. The agency fears locust numbers could grow 500 times by June. June. The FAO also says Ethiopia and Somalia have not faced an infestation on this scale for 25 years, while Kenya has not seen a low-cost threat this size for 70 years. South Sudan and Uganda are also at risk if the swamps continue to grow and spread. The desert locust invasion, what we know is that it's the worst that we've seen in in Ethiopia, in Somalia in 25 years, and the worst that we've seen in Kenya in se over 70 years. The extent of the locust situation varies from country to country, but in the Horn of Africa, it is current in Ethiopia, Kenya, and in Somalia. We know that in Ethiopia, there's about 430 square kilometers that have been affected so far, and there has been extensive uh, crop damage in those areas. As it moves uh, to other parts of, of the country, uh, we expect that the impact that it will have on food security and agricultural livelihoods, both for the farmers and for the pastoralists, can be significant. There is a risk to, for it spreading. Uh, the countries that are on watch, the most significant countries on watch at this point, are Uganda and South Sudan. Uganda has not uh, had to deal with with a locust infestation since the 60s. So there is concern about the ability uh, for experts to on the ground to be able to deal with it without uh, the su external support. And in a country like uh, South Sudan, already there are 47% of the population is food insecure. South Africa's aviation sector is in mourning following the crash of a flight inspection unit aircraft accident on Thursday in George, the Western Cape province. 
Three officers of the South Africa Civil Aviation Authority died in the crash and the cause is yet to be identified. Addressing a press conference today, the Director of Civil Aviation at the South African Civil Aviation Authority, Ms. Poppy Zosa, says a team from the Accident and Incident Investigation Department has already been dispatched to George to find out the cause and collect evidence from the scene. The aircraft, a Cessna Citation S550S2, owned and operated by the South African Civil Aviation's Flight Inspection Unit, took off from George Airport at 10.40 to conduct calibration of the airport's navigation systems. However, shortly after takeoff, the aircraft control tower lost contact with the aircraft. As per procedure, a search and rescue operation was immediately activated and ultimately the wreckage was located at around 1340. On board the aircraft, there were three professionals, all employees of the South African Civil Aviation Authority. That is Captain Tabiso Dolo, who was 49 years of age. The first officer, Ms. Debucho Caroline Ligalagala, who was 33 years of age. And Flight Inspector Gugu Kamfat Mguni, who was 36 years of age. It is with deep regret and devastation to announce that these esteemed colleagues were all fatally injured during the aircraft accident. The South African Civil Aviation Authority family and the aviation industry are saddened by the passing of these greatly experienced colleagues who possessed very rare and important skills that ensures that our airports comply with the set international standards. At the time of their untimely passing, we were still looking forward to their immense contribution to the aviation industry and to the upkeep of our country's outstanding safety record. May their souls rest in peace. Still in South Africa, a cautious calm has returned to the Splut community in Johannesburg after the killing of a police officer allegedly by a foreign national sparked protest action on Thursday. Police had their hands full in controlling a crowd that barricaded major roads with burning tires calling for undocumented foreign nationals to leave the area. Residents stormed the police station on Thursday morning demanding officers hand over the man accused of killing a cop last week. Detective Captain Opua Matjie was fatally shot while in pursuit of suspects last week in the area. A man has since been arrested for the officer's murder. Channel TV Katleo Lehodi was in dispute and filed this report. Deep Slut in the north of Johannesburg is calm following a day of violent protest action. Residents took to the streets demanding that undocumented foreign nationals leave the area, accusing them of being responsible for crime. A police officer was killed in the area last week, allegedly by a foreign national. This shop owner from Mozambique says he had to close shop, fearing for his life. There is nothing I can do once the protests begin other than close shop. If you don't close shop, they will loot your goods. Some locals say the protest is not xenophobic and have called for calm. We don't like it when people are killed in deep slot. It has affected us because churches are being torched, streets barricaded, and kids can't go to school and others can't even go to work. People who aren't on the ground must take a step back and see the reason why residents are throwing stones and listen to their reasons for doing this. Deep Slut, north of Johannesburg, remains the center of attention. The rain might have hampered demonstrations for now, but residents insist that Police Minister Becky Keller comes down to the area to address the concerns they've raised. From Deep Slut, Johannesburg, South Africa, Katlaya Kholokhodi, Channels Television News. Still to come on the program. Our Africa Tech segment discusses the impact of technology in boosting the agricultural industry. Please stay with us.